Good morning. Welcome to St. Charles. Today we're celebrating the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Before we begin our celebration, please take a moment and make sure that your cell phones are turned to silent or off. Thank you. Please stand and take a moment to welcome one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we do gather together today as Christ's church, and we hear the Lord speak to us in His Word proclaimed. We receive Him in His sacraments celebrated, and we encounter Him in each other gathered together as the body of Christ. As we begin our worship this holy day, let us call to mind those moments we have not been attentive to each other in our needs the way that Christ asks us to, and seek His mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, You are the Word teaching us to respond to those in need. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, You are the risen one speaking to us of new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ. Lord Jesus, you're the prophet calling us to repentance. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sin, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And as always, I invite forward our children who will be going forth to hear today's Scripture stories at a level appropriate for them. We want to give you guys a blessing as you go your way. How you doing today? Good? All right. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Good to see you all. Good morning. Good morning. You're going to be my book bearer today. We're all set. Looking good. And still they come. I'd like to invite the community to please extend your hands in blessing over the children this day. My dear friends, we send you forth to hear God's word proclaimed, and we pray that the Spirit of God would be with you, that you may understand everything his word teaches, and that it will guide you every day of your life. Go now in peace. So there we go. We all know what we're doing, that the candle goes first. The word of God follows right behind, and everybody follows the word of God. And we'll see you guys in a little while. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, woe to the complacent in Zion, lying upon beds of ivory, stretched comfortably on their couches. They eat lambs taken from the flock and calves from the stall. Improvising to the music of the harp, like David, they devise their own accompaniment. They drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the best oils. Yet they're not made ill by the collapse of Joseph. Therefore, now they shall be the first to go into exile, and their wanton revelry shall be done away with. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. But you, man of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession, to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his water, the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets, 
Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was once a father who every night would, of course, tuck his young son into bed, and every night the young son would say his prayers before he'd fall asleep. And one night they were performing their ritual, and the young son began to pray, and he said, Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should wake before I die, oh, sorry, Daddy, I got that backwards. And the father in his wisdom said, Oh, no, my son. It would be one of my greatest hopes for you would be that you would be awake before you die. Tragically, I think there are a lot of people who spend most of their life asleep and not awake. They make their way through their days, their weeks, their months, their years, often very unaware of so much going on around them. And if they ever do realize what's happening, it's often in a moment of crisis and a moment of shock and a moment when it comes almost too late. As an example of that, we have Amos the prophet today. The the moral issue that Amos is going on about is not sinful behavior. You want to hear Amos go on about sinful behavior? Look at last week's first reading. There he's going on about sinful behavior. This week... The moral issue is this, complacency. Woe to you, complacent. To people who are very rich and very self-satisfied and very comfortable and whom have apparently lost a sense of the rest of everything going on around them in their world. I mean, Amos almost outlines for us what the Dolce Vida in 8th century B.C. Samaria would be like imported seats, large sofas to recline upon as you eat your meals of of tender meats from from lambs who had not yet produced wool or calves that had not even reached the age to produce milk, bowls of wine. They're able to have leisurely jam sessions on their harps as time permits, and lots of rich perfumes. And none of that in and of itself is sinful. None of that in and of itself is necessarily wrong. The problem that Amos points out is they have, in their luxury, become numb to the direction their country is heading in, to the disaster that's about to befall them because of their selfishness and their selfish decisions. They have missed the bigger picture because they're so concerned about themselves. They're asleep to what's going on. They're they're not awake to it. It's not that they did anything wrong necessarily. They just let their lives and what they were doing keep them from being aware of greater issues and other people. The parable that Jesus gives us today of the rich man and Lazarus is essentially the wrong thing. I don't think you could say the rich man did anything wrong. He didn't commit any crimes, but he wasn't innocent either. Somehow, in the midst of all his luxury and his sumptuous dining and his purple robes and so on and so forth, he was not awake. He was asleep to the guy right there in front of him every day who could have used his help. And that's a problem. That's an issue. I don't think this parable is so much one that gives us a punchline or a moral to live by as it is a cautionary tale. And what does it caution against? It cautions against getting so involved with ourselves that we become oblivious to what's really important. Other people. Other people. There's one feature in this parable which ever since I was a kid, I found interesting. It always grabbed my attention, and I wasn't sure why. And this week in my research, I discovered there's a word in this parable 
that is used nowhere else in the New Testament and maybe one place in the Old Testament, and that's the word chasm. There's a great chasm between Lazarus and the rich man and the rich man and Lazarus. And what is that? What is that great chasm that exists? I mean, is it just a literary device that Jesus used to move the story forward? Of course not. It has meaning. It has purpose. And I think the chasm is literally the rich man's inability to respond to the need of the poor man. His inability. I think the chasm is something that he formed himself throughout his life. He dug it. He carved it by his lack of response to another in need. I mean, he had the Word of God. He had Moses and the prophets, which I'm sure he heard. He just never heeded. And in the long run, it made, him, it, made it impossible for him to get to Lazarus. And certainly Lazarus, who had tried to be present to him all his life, could no longer have access to him. A chasm had formed. Here's how I think this works. And I'm just going to share it from my own life and my personal experience of going grocery shopping at Safeway. Every time I go to shop at Safeway, there's an individual, a man or a woman, or a family looking for help looking for a handout. And if I go past them without even acknowledging them, I'm not talking about giving them money or even giving them food, but even just like waving at them or saying hello to them, acknowledging them as human beings, a distance forms between me and them. And over time, it becomes easier and easier and easier to ignore them, to not even see them there to step over them even though they're right at the gate. I'm too busy figuring out what I'm going to dine on. I'm on my task. I'm on my errand. No time. I'm asleep. I'm blind to what's right there. Whereas, if I take a moment, and even driving by my car and wave and they wave back, that happened this week, or give them a gift certificate to Safeway, or buy them a sandwich, that gap closes suddenly they become human to me. They're real to me. We have conversation. They're grateful. It's a wonderful moment. And that chasm disappears. I think we create those chasms in our own life that, in essence, make our heart hard. And the less we respond to people in need, the easier it becomes not to respond to people in need. And I don't think we have to wait until eternity to see chasms or find people who are chasm makers. I mean, few weeks go by that we don't hear about someone whose marriage is in trouble or in a rocky state or slowly dying. Few weeks go by that we don't hear about someone else's children who are having a hard time, who are looking to maybe crash and burn if someone doesn't step in to help out. Few weeks go by that there aren't people around us, be it classmates or workmates or spouses or children or neighbors or strangers, who are silently crying out for help, be it physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, and the tragedy is so much of that pain and so much of those chasms don't need to exist. If the chasm maker would just look up in the mirror and recognize my spouse, my children, my friends, my neighbors are hurting. I don't think chasm makers are intentionally cruel. I don't think they mean to maim or harm or hurt. I think they're just asleep. Just asleep. Like the rich people that Amos preaches about today, or the rich man in the parable, chasm makers tend to be focused on themselves, their life, 
their business, their work, their pain, their suffering, their grievances, their cell phone, their agenda, their whatever. And it's almost understandable. I mean, it's very hard to put yourself aside for another person when your own life is a struggle, when your own life is painful, when you've got your own issues to deal with. But isn't that exactly what the gospel calls us to? Isn't that exactly what Christ did for us that we're called to emulate? To put ourselves aside for the sake of another? I've shared with you before how half a lifetime ago I was on the national evangelization teams. And this little example, I think, goes to what I'm speaking about. It was a team of 12 people. I was one of 12. And we spent 12 months traveling, doing youth ministry, doing high school retreats. And one of the things we set as a goal for ourselves, one of the things we were trained in, was to actually try to anticipate and meet the needs of the other members of the team before they would maybe even recognize they had them. And I cannot tell you the number of times that we would drive up to the host family's house and start to pile out of the van. And by the time I could get out of the van and around to the back of the trailer to get my luggage, my luggage was gone and in the house and on the bed in the room that I was staying in. It was taken care of for me. Or often, I was the member of the team who gave the talks. Imagine that, me in front of a crowd giving talks. <laughs> and I can remember very clearly one day in Louisiana, in a very small room with all these high school students where it was hot and humid and there was no air conditioning, giving a talk. And I got down, done, and sat down, almost sat down, when an arm reached around with a cup of water for me. There it was. It was a wonderful moment that someone had actually thought of me and anticipated what I would need. And you know what that enabled me to do? With 11 people looking out for me, it enabled me to put all my concerns about my life aside so I could look out for them. My luggage is in the back of the van. Whose is? I'll take theirs. Suddenly, I was free to serve more. And I think that's a little bit of what heaven's going to be like. We put ourselves aside to care for others. There's a contemporary Christian artist whose name is Brandon Heath. And he has a song that the very first time I heard it, and ever since, it haunts me with its challenge. In the song, Brandon wonders about the people that he passes by in his life. And in the refrain, he prays, give me your eyes for just one second Give me your eyes so I can see everything that I've been missing. Give me your love for humanity. Give me your heart for the brokenhearted, the ones that are far beyond my reach. Give me your eyes for just one second. If we woke up and for just one second saw as Jesus saw, what might there be that's right in front of you that you have been missing? I don't think the readings today are supposed to make us feel guilty for having wealth or guilty for being busy or guilty for having lives. I think they're meant to actually empower us and free us from so many of the things we spend our time with that really have no eternal value that in the light of eternity don't hold a whole lot of water, to free us so that we can wake up and maybe just for one second have the eyes of Christ. Let us stand to profess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty.
trusting in God's mercy, we bring before him our needs in prayer. That the church in the world may always embody care for the poor, working to assure that every person has the basic necessities of life they deserve as children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord that in these difficult times our country may know peace, resolving differences not with violence, but with dialogue, goodwill, and an honest pursuit of truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord that we may be a people who are always awake and ready to respond generously to the needs of our family members and friends, workmates, classmates, neighbors, and strangers. We pray to the Lord. Lord that those who during their lives on earth served Christ in others may be escorted by the angels to the bosom of Abraham, especially Ermgard Eschenweck, mother of Yuta Masud, Margaret Sherman, wife of William Sherman. We pray to the Lord. For all the intentions written in this book of intercessions and all those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Loving and gracious God, hear the prayers we bring you. Grant us all things for your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this, our offering, may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by His birth He brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by His suffering canceled out our sins. By His rising from the dead He has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter.
dying, the weary ones praying for solace, surrender. God shall Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim His death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I invite forward those who be carrying the Eucharist to our brothers and sisters at home or in the hospital. Let's see here. Monica, this is for you. This is Vince, it's all right. And there's yours. Be a little careful this. I couldn't get it to close properly. Okay. My dear sisters and brother, we send you forth bearing the heart of our faith, Jesus, and the Blessed Sacrament. 
as you visit those who could not join us in prayer this day. Please assure them of our prayers for them. Share with them the good news of Christ's salvation for all. Thank you so much for your ministry to those in need. God bless. All right, so just a few things going on for you to share. Do you see all these things? Look at all those things. There's plenty of them. I'll try to shoot through them quickly, but just at the top, if you were sure to pick up a bulletin, there's more information on all these things in the bulletin, so please get that in addition to other things that are going on as well. It's definitely fall, lots happening. First, I wanted to mention that next weekend, we have our annual second collection for the Catholic Voice, the diocesan newspaper. I've shared with you before that if you're registered in the parish, you should be receiving the Catholic voice. Um, what happens is every month, like clockwork, we receive in the office a bill from the Catholic voice for the subscriptions for everybody in the parish. So next weekend's second collection doesn't actually go to the voice. It stays 100% here in the parish to reimburse the parish for the cost of the voice. Um, they tell us that $20 a family covers that. I don't know if that's true or not, but there it is. Uh, there are these envelopes for the second collection next weekend out by the bulletins if you would like an envelope for that. So thank you very much. This coming Thursday night at 7 o'clock, we have the next offering in our Body and Soul series. On Thursday night at 7 o'clock over in the hall, Ms. Debbie Burnt will be here to talk about, uh, her topic is the truth about marijuana. As you know, coming up in the election in November, there's a proposition to legalize the recreational use of marijuana in the state. So hopefully this will give you some information that you'll be able to make an informed decision how you want to vote on that. So Thursday night at 7 o'clock over in the hall. Um, this is the last weekend for signups, both for ministries and for small faith groups for the fall. Again, in both those cases, if you are already in a ministry, you do not need to re-sign. We have your information. If you're already in a small group, you do not need to re-sign. We have your information. If you would like to join an additional ministry or would like to be a new minister in a ministry, we invite you to check out the table and sign up. There's ministries not only for things that happen here during Mass, but for all sorts of other things that happen in the parish. Uh, this is the last weekend to do that, so please check that out. We've listed particularly ministries where we are like thin on ministers. We could use some more help. So please check that out and, and go ahead and sign up this weekend. And then small faith groups begin next month. We will be looking at the corporal and spiritual works of mercy as we come to the end of the year of mercy. I think it's going to be a very interesting conversation we'll be having. Um, so this is the last opportunity to sign up for those small groups, so please take care of that today. Want to remind every minister in every ministry, hear that, every minister in every ministry, that you must complete your safe environment for children training by this time next week by October 1. If you've not yet done that, in the bulletin is the information about how to log online and make that happen, so please get that accomplished. If you are in a ministry and you do not accomplish the uh, safe environment training, you will not be allowed to continue in that ministry. It's not my decision, it's the decision of the bishops of the United States because we take that very seriously. So please make sure that you take care of that. Thank you very much for that. For our liturgical ministers, lectors, ministers of hospitality, um, uh, Eucharistic ministers, uh, music ministers, art and art ministers, uh, once a year we set aside a Saturday morning to offer you a chance for some spiritual enrichment. Uh, this year it will happen on Saturday, October 15, from 9 to 12 in the morning. Uh, there's information about the bulletin, uh, what our morning will be like, so please schedule that and join us for what should be a very beautiful and prayerful morning. Um, as you leave today, interestingly, our health ministry has a station set up. It's not even a table. It's, it's just a folding board with some information set up right behind the donut ministry. Where else would you put health ministry? But right behind the donut ministry. But today they're offering information about um, flu prevention tips, uh, importance of having babies vaccinated, uh, protecting your family from the flu. There's some things for the kids there. So please check that out as we approach the flu season. That would be wonderful. Then want to let you know that next Sunday, October 2nd, at 2.30 in the afternoon, we will celebrate the Feast of St. Francis with the blessing of pets. So, yeah, I know, I know. I'm crazy, but, you know, I welcome these things into my life. Um, so next Sunday at 2, there, there's a parent meeting at 1 o'clock, a couple other things happening. So at 2.30, when all the other activities are over, we'll gather on the new beautiful lawn out there. We'll see how it holds up and, um, and bless pets. Uh, we invite you to bring whatever you have as a family pet. We'll see how exotic we get. 
I think last time we did this, a horse showed up. I've had llamas. I've had geese. I've had iguanas and other things. Um, so bring your pets next Sunday, 2.30. It'll probably take us about a half hour to um, bless all the pets. It's always very noisy and very enjoyable. And Father tries not to get bitten more than once. So um, we'll see how that goes. So that's next Sunday. Again, there's more information on all that and other things happening in the parish in the bulletin. Uh, outside of that, just a warm welcome and thank you to anyone who is a guest with us today or anyone who's joining us online on our live webcast. Uh, we thank you for praying with us wherever you may be. We know that our experience of worship before God is, is enriched for every member of the body of Christ who joins us, whether you're here or abroad. Um, if you've moved into the area recently and are looking for a parish to join, we have a minister out by our welcome table who can answer questions for you about the parish and even get you registered today if you'd like to do that. Again, thank you all for your presence, and please know that you're always welcome here at St. Charles Borromeo. And the Lord is with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives.